Hey everybody, Neil Malik from Knack Training here, bringing you another everyday office video. And in today's video, I'm going to demonstrate how Power Query can turn this data that's saved in a central location into many, many different things with almost no effort at all. So first, I'm going to close this data down. I'm going to open up a new spreadsheet because the concept here is pretty straightforward. It's that there are users of that data and the users of that data need to be able to go in different directions. They need to be able to show reports about all sorts of different things. So here I am in a blank workbook and I'm going to begin in this blank workbook by using Power Query to connect to the data that I'm interested in. I go to the data tab at the top of the screen, click on from text or CSV because the information is in a CSV file here. I go look at the employee data CSV file and I pull this in to Power Query. Now I'm going to click on transform data so I actually see it in Power Query and I make certain decisions about it. As you can see here, I now have a query called employee data because that's the name of the CSV file. And now what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to double click on employee data and I'm going to call this all employee data parentheses. And then I'm going to put in something that lets people know that this is our original source. So I'll put in original, for example, in parentheses. Now I'm going to click on close and load and load that to a connection rather than into a table or anything like that. Because now in my spreadsheet, I have at my disposal all the employee data, but I know that there are going to be certain situations that call for different types of reports. So now I'll double click on all employee data over here on the right, or alternatively, I could use the get data dro uh, drop down menu on the data tab and click on Launch Power Query Editor. Either way, I'd be getting back into Power Query and looking at that employee data query right there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a problem, right? I'm going to have a scenario that somebody comes to me with, and I'm going to say something like, oh hey, uh, could you tell me when everybody's anniversaries, work anniversaries are, and how many years of service they have so far? So what I'll do is I'll right click on all employee data. I will reference this. And the reason I'm referencing it is because the all employee data is going to be the thing that brings in the data from the CSV file. And then all these other queries I'm going to build are going to refer to it. I'll go here to reference and I'll call this employee, uh, let's call it employee anniversaries and uh, service. Now I know, oops, no quotation marks there, employee service. So now I know that I don't actually need department salary or retirement withholding. I can right click and remove those columns. And based on the date of hire, I can get a quick calculation of the two things I was interested in. So I'll go up here to add column and I'll add a column to calculate out the date. And I'll go into month and put in the name of the month. So now I can isolate people by what month they were hired in. And the second thing I'll do, again, with the date of hire column selected, is I'll look for the age, the time that they have been with us. So I'll click on age right there. Then with the age column selected, I'm going to go to transform and convert that age column into total number of years. And then I could just take this column, for example, and put it age in, let's put, call it not age, but rather uh, service years. Perfect. And so now based on this, and actually I can get rid of the date of hire column at this point because I have the information I need. I can do things like sort by what month we were talking about. Then export this into Excel, go to the home tab and load that to a table in the workbook right there. And now HR 
has the ability to sort this by month to be able to say, oh, you know, you know what coming up is March. Let me see everybody who was hired in March and then let me see sorted largest to smallest how many years they've been on board with us and we can see very clearly there that uh, this person's going to come up on 22 years of service in March so maybe we can give them some sort of plaque or something. Now we get another problem that comes in. We go back to the all employee data query over here on the right, double click on it, pop that open, and now we're being asked to do a reporting on how much is being paid out to the different departments, or how much is being withheld by different people, or any of those other components. So easily here, again I go to my queries panel on the left hand side, right click on my all employee data, reference that, and call this one, uh, let's call it production salaries. And here we can filter by department, only show the production employees that we have. I can remove the date of hire column because it's irrelevant to this specific report. Then I have the salary here and the percentage of retirement withholdings. And what I can do here is I can click on percentage retirement withholding, hold down shift and click on salary, and using my add column feature, you'll see here that I can do certain standard calculations. So I can multiply these two things together and I can do something in this column called uh, amount withheld for retirement. So that's a simple multiplication, but now let's think of a more elaborate calculation. Let's talk about a calculation that uses logic. Let's say that our company matches 50% of what's being withheld up to 4% withholding. Now you can see in this column that some people are withholding up to 5% of their salary, so I only want to give them 2%, not 2.5% if they're withholding that 5%. Now, so I'm going to have to build in some sort of if statement. And what I'll do here is I'll put in on the add column tab a custom column. Now you will notice that there is this concept called a conditional column over here on the left, but unfortunately conditional columns cannot also do calculations within them. It's really about if this is true, show this value. So what we're going to have to do is a custom column. I'm going to click on custom column here, and it opens up an actual editor. And I'll put in here uh, company match parentheses, retirement. And what is the company's match going to be? Now, you could do this a bunch of different ways, but here's what I'm going to say. If the column for retirement withholding is less than or equal to 0 0.04, that's 4%, then we simply take the salary value and multiply it by the withholding value and split it in half, right? So what we'll do here is we'll do the salary value times the retirement withholding times 0.5. However, if they are above that 4%, else, we will take the salary, multiply it by 0.02, which is of course half of 0.04, right? If we are allowing people to match up to half of 4%, then the overflow is just times 0.02. You can see down here at the bottom that no syntax errors have been detected. I click OK. And note right here, underneath company match, there is this green bar right here. And it says that 100% of these are valid, none of them are in error, and none of them are empty. So I'm looking pretty good there. Now, the second thing I'll do is I'll make sure to convert this also into currency. 
Then simply click on the company match and the amount held withheld for retirement. And I can do, again, another standard calculation of adding those two together and having this be total retirement. Something along those lines. So with this, I can even come in here, remove the two columns that I used to figure out the total retirement, right click on those columns and remove them, and they are unnecessary now because the data has been calculated and they don't need to stick around. And again, I can go to my home tab at the top of the screen, click close and load, close and load to, and load that to a table right here. So I see here that I have all of production and nobody else. I have their salaries, the amount that's being withheld as a percentage, and the total that's being paid to retirement, including our match. And what's really great about this is, let's go to Amine Gomez here in the original file. I'll pull up the original file here of my employee data, double click on it. And I'll change Amine Gomez's retirement withholdings from 0% to 1%. So she's still making $46.7,000, but now she's withholding 1%. I'll save that file, close it down, and all I have to do now is find some way of refreshing this query. We saw in an earlier video that we can change the default settings, but I think the fastest way to do it is just to right click directly on the table and then hit refresh. And just like that, Amine Gomez's retirement withholding percentage has gone up to 1% and the total withheld for retirement is $700.50.